Now we're going over to Article 3. The first panelist on Article 3 is Governor Gina Raimondo and uh, Kevin Gallagher. Kevin, sir, thank you very much, Governor, for coming down to our uh, committee room. I know it's a busy time. We appreciate you coming down and uh, giving us some testimony. We've already had a briefing and some questions. I'm not sure you heard them all, but the floor is yours. Thank you. There we go. Is that gotcha. right? That's good. Okay, so uh, Chairman Abney, members of the committee, I want to thank you for uh, having me here today. And I'm not here to make your night any longer, so I'll be brief. <laughs> But I just, uh, this is an important proposal that I believe could be a game changer for Rhode Island, and I wanted to come down and ask you for your support. Um, I first want to begin by thanking you for your support and your collaboration uh, in the years that I've been governor. You've been terrific to work with, and we've done a lot together. Uh, and it's starting to work. You know, last, year, last week we announced our unemployment rate, is lower than the national average. That's the first time that's happened in a long time, and you deserve credit for that. Our partnership has really led to that, so I want to thank you for that. Uh, what so the Rhode Island Promise proposal is all about is making sure that Rhode Islanders are getting the good jobs that businesses are creating. So the good news is, Companies are creating thousands of jobs and have been doing that. Now it's on us. I believe we here have a collective responsibility and obligation to make sure those jobs go to the people of Rhode Island. And the only way that's going to happen is if the people of Rhode Island have the job training and education that's required to get these good jobs, to get the high-wage, high-skill jobs that are happening, and you know that. I mean, you talk to businesses every day. Some of you own businesses. You know as well as I do. When you talk to companies, what they tell you, when you say to them, what's it going to take for you to grow here and add jobs here, they tell us that people need to have the job training and education that we need. And so what this proposal is about is making sure everyone in Rhode Island has access to that education and that job training. By the way, Again, I have to thank you. We've done a lot together on this path. We've expanded apprenticeship programs. We've made record investments in pre-K through 12 education. Um, you know, uh, college loan forgiveness programs with the Wavemaker Fellowship. You know, we've, we're expanding and improving career and technical education. And all that matters. And, and I my hat's off to you for making that work in the context of a tough budget. The Rhode Island Promise Program is a continuation of all that work that we've done together. It's the next step in that education and job training work that we've done together. Now, my team is here, and they will stay here as long as you want to answer whatever questions you want. Uh, so I'm not going to go through that, but I did want to, you know, tell you why is it so important to me. Because I talk to people every day just like you do, and they say, Governor, I'm willing to work hard. I want one of those jobs. GE, J and J, how do I get one of those? You need job training and an education. And it shouldn't matter if you're poor or rich. You deserve that chance. And that's what this is about. Now, you know, you're the Finance Committee, so you know this budget backwards and forwards. You know that this proposal has been put forth with no tax increases and is less than one-half of 1% 1 of our budget. It's a drop in the bucket in this budget. It will provide relief to middle-class families around Rhode Island, and it will benefit every Rhode Islander, whether you want to get a four-year degree at URI and RIC or a two-year degree, a technical degree at CCRI. In addition to talking people every day who tell me they want a job and they want a shot, I've also talked, and you all have too, to college students, at, particularly at, you know, at URI, but particularly at Rick and CCRI, who tell me they're dropping out because they can't afford it. And I've talked to a lot of professors. My, they, tell, they tell you the stories of these amazing students. They're working two or three jobs, taking the bus an hour to get to school. Eventually they give up. 
because it is too hard to stay in school working three jobs, so what they wind up is a bundle of debt and no degree. Studies show, and we've put this all in testimony, that the high cost of college is one of the leading reasons that less than half of students who start college in the United States actually finish. You know, it's hard to believe, it might be hard to believe, hard for me to believe, hard for you guys to believe that $500, $1,000, $2,000 stands in the way of somebody going to college or finishing college. But it does. It really does. The average Rhode Island Promise scholarship will probably be a couple thousand dollars, but it has the power to change lives and keep people in school, get that degree, and get a good job. In Tennessee, uh, they've enacted a similar program, Republican governor, Republican legislature, and I won't go through all the details. My staff's happy to answer any questions. But they passed a similar program several years ago. Uh, and you know what they found? The results are amazing. When they help pay for the cost of college, they have found in the first class of students with the scholarships, they saw graduation rates increase by 80%. It's unbelievable. We know this is a big barrier. So this proposal isn't about giving something away for free. It's not about giving something away for free. It's about guaranteeing every Rhode Islander access to a good education, job training, and opportunity that they deserve. Uh, permit me for 30 seconds. I've received hundreds and hundreds of letters. I will not read them all to you. I have a, a sl small selection here from high schoolers. And if you have a minute, read through them. It's a, these kids are amazing, and they just want a chance. But Elizabeth Flaherty wrote to me. She says, as a middle-class family, we finally feel like we may possibly get a break. This proposal is proof that working hard pays off. Sandy Salomeno writes, as a single mom of an honor student in seventh grade, I've lost many nights sleep worrying about how I would send my son to college. I work seven days a week, working two jobs just to get by week to week. I was literally in tears when the Rhode Island Promise Initiative was announced. My son deserves the same chance at a college education as every other Rhode Island child. I agree with her. I saw these kids in the hallway. Man, they have talent. They have promise. They don't have a lot of money, though. And they deserve a chance to get a job. And all these companies that are adding jobs here or coming here, they deserve access to the skilled workforce. Rhode Island, you know, together we recruit companies to come here. I think any company is lucky to be in Rhode Island and hire our people. Our people work hard, and they're lucky to have them. But it's on us to make sure people have the job training and education and higher education that these companies need to hire and that these kids in the hallway just have a shot. They don't want a handout. They don't want anything free. They just want a shot. And we have the money to do it. It's a drop in the bucket, and I'm here to ask you for your support. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of questions I can hear. <laughs> that was cute. That was great timing. Yeah, that was cute. <laughs> for, those of you, for those of you in TV land who don't know what's happening, there are some cheering in the background out in the hallways. But are there any burning questions for the governor on what she just described that any member of the panel, other than Representative Giarusso, <laughs> want to uh, want to ask? Representative Giarusso, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Governor, thank you for coming. Thank you, Rep. Um, out of courtesy to you, and I know how busy you are. You know, I do have other questions, but I just have one question for you. Yes, sir. We've all heard the term brain drain, how we're educating our children and then 70% or up to around 70% have to leave Rhode Island because we don't have the jobs here. And on the flip side, 70% nationally do get jobs in the state where their alma mater is. So I'm just wondering, how, does it, how do we address that if we're giving, we're giving some breaks to some of the students? 
Well, it's a, but it's an excellent question, and we do need people to stay. You know, folks will be here from RIC and URI and CCRI, but the reality is the vast majority of students who graduate uh, from RIC and CCRI, they stay in Rhode Island. Uh, I believe students who uh, receive this scholarship will be much more likely to stay in Rhode Island because they, you know, we've given them a hand to get through college. The, the two problems that keep me up at night are, number one, the number of students who are dropping out because they can't afford it. And, I, again, I have to say, I've spent a lot of time in the cafeterias of Rick and CCRI. It's amazing to me. Or you meet people in the community and you say, why did you drop out? And they say, well, I, the gap was, you know, $700. You dropped out of college for $700? Yes. Where was I going to get the money? So that student... If we had given them a hand, a $1,000 scholarship, and they graduate with a degree in nursing from Rick, they're going to go work in Rhode Island and be a great nurse. But without our help, they're going to drop out, maybe. They'll have debt, and they're not going to go be a nurse that we need in our hospitals and that they deserve to have that good job. So, and I spent a lot, you know, GE, Johnson & Johnson, Electric Boat, they want to be in Rhode Island. They love this program. Because they want to know these people are going to go to URI or CC, you know, wherever, get that engineering degree, and then go work for them. And that's what we want, too, because that's economic development. So I think, um, I think this is a game changer for our economy. You know, I do. The, I, 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 the Providence Chamber came out and supported it. Uh, business folks I talk to are very much in support. They want talent, and we have great talent. It's just college is so expensive, folks need a hand. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, you're quite welcome. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Governor. I, I really just, appreciate that. Go ahead. I want to thank you guys. There's a lot of competing priorities. Uh, I'm looking forward to this process. I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback. I'm looking forward to seeking your advice and counsel. And I'm looking forward to doing what we always do, which is get things done together. Because when we come together... We do great things for Rhode Island, and I just, um, I also do want to thank you. Uh, you're going to be here for a little while, and uh, people ought to know that, that you work hard, and I appreciate it. Rhode Island's better for it, so thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.